Hey, what's up everyone? I welcome you once again to one of my tutorials. In this session, I will be talking about how you can create a simple database in the PostgreSQL and how you can create a simple table into which we will be streaming cryptocurrencies. So how I will begin is already visible here. I started my PG admin form and logged in as I was showing to you in the previous video. And now I'm going to create a new database simply like this. Right click on databases create database and now give the database name it's going to be called all currencies as owner i will leave the postgres i will go through definition security parameters advanced sql all right so that would be it database is created and now i would like to add some table into which i will stream the cryptocurrencies so I will click on the schemas here on tables and here I will right click the tables. I will say create table and I think I was calling the table tickers. So tickers, owner, postgres, schema, public. This would be all okay. And now I can define the columns that the table is going to contain. Here at columns, you need to click this little plus here. The first one I'm going to need is ID of a data type, UUID. I don't need to define length and precision or scale but it has to be not null and it has to be a primary key that's why i have those two checked now another column is going to be the symbol and the symbol is going to be of a similar data type like I had in my Microsoft SQL streaming video and that was nbar car but here is going to be called character varying and I will give it a length or precision of 50 exactly and you will not have the 50 number offered here. This is only because I was trying it out with one of my previous applications and not null and this time I don't need to have it as a primary key. As a primary key you can have only one of the columns. So next thing I will need price and price is going to be a numeric data type and this data type is going to have precision of 25 digits and uh, 15 of them behind the decimal point. It's going to be not null and it's not going to be a primary key. And now I'll create another column and this is going to be the date time. And date time is going to be simply just time. And now I have a possibility to select a time with a time zone or a time without a time zone or simply just a time step with time zone or without time zone. And what I'm going to do is to completely simplify it because for us now it's just an example. So I'm going to select time without time zone just to keep things simple for the beginning. And it's going to be not null. It will not have any length or precision or scale and it's not going to be a primary key because primary key is only one and that's it these are all my columns now we'll go have a look here no constraints in partitions you don't need anything so everything is actually pretty fine i will save it and now i have a table with columns with four of them id symbol price and date time and now let's go stream some data into it. For this, I just prepared my Visual Studio code and I'm going to create a small app that is going to stream all currencies from Binance into PostgreSQL database. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy most of it from my own Tech Division's GitHub account and I'm going to a little bit optimize it. So let's do this. This is my Python Binance stream all currencies into MSSQL DB app written in Python. And I'm going to copy almost all of this. The entire app in Python here is just the Chrome Python file and DB Python file. The Chrome Python file contains the Chrome job which uh, I need for the repetitive actions and I'm going to copy the name and I'm going to put it into this my new directory that I created here Python Binance stream all currencies into Postgres DB. So I will create a new file called Chrome Python and I'm going to copy all the contents of this into this file you can do the same thing it's really easy and you can see now it wants to import the db file here that's why i'm going to copy the db file simply like this 
and I'm going to create a new file db.python and I will paste the new file here. So now this file is optimized for MS SQL database and I simply just need to change a few things here to make this file work with the PostgreSQL database. It works in such a way that the crawl Python file is the file which is being started and scheduled for every 60 seconds but for presentation purposes I'm going to change it to 3 but you better probably keep it at 16. Do not be disconnected by Python too fast and now in the db python I'm going to implement the real changes and the changes are going to be the server here I will change into a host the host is going to have a standard local host address 127.001 it's going to stream everything into a database called all currencies that's correct a username python that's correct i will create one soon with the password 111 and with a connection string this is not going to fit anymore before I was connecting through PyODBC and uh, now I'm going to connect through PSYCOPG2. That's a really complicated name but it's a really famous Python driver for PostgreSQL and how you can install it is actually really simple. Say PIP, I mean in case you don't have it installed yet. PIP install PSYCOPG2 enter and it gets installed in my case it's already here and uh, yeah i don't really need to upgrade it so for that reason i'm going to keep it the way it is and the next thing that i'm going to change is this here i will simply just copy this here to use it and i will use the keyword connect but not to a connection string but to some keywords which should be specified here so it's a db name database user password host and port so these are the keywords that i need to specify now so the first thing that i'm going to specify is i will change this database to db name so the first thing that i need to specify now is the db name and it's going to be my db name here it's all currencies then the next thing which was here was the user so user is going to be our username so i will change also this user to user to keep it simple and now password is going to be our password 111 now host and port so host is going to be our host and port is going to be a very famous one 5432 for the PostgreSQL database. I mean, it also depends on where you installed your PostgreSQL database, but if you followed my previous video, I installed it on 5432 because this is the default one. All right, so I think that this part should be all right. This part should be also all right. And now connection auto commit on true and connection cursor this should be also all right. This is good. What is not good is this here with the new driver, which is this year and uh, the new database system we are also getting a new syntax and that one is going to look uh, kind of like really similar to this one i will write it like this insert into tickers values with three apostrophe signs at the beginning insert into tickers tickers will receive double quotes values and now let's specify the columns id symbol these are the columns which we created before here id symbol price and date time id symbol price and date time and into those we are going to save the values which are going to be specified not by a question mark anymore but by present and s sign string u uid4 is correct i'll make this smaller now item symbol is also correct item price and now this is actually the data being iterated here it is a row of uh, cryptocurrency data arriving from binance to cron python which i explained in some of my previous videos which are about streaming all currencies from binance at the same time if you didn't see those please have a look because in this video i'm concentrating only on how to change the database type into the postgresql database all right with that said i'm going to remove this row here and yeah i have a cursor executing an insert into the tickers table into the columns id symbol price and date time as specified here in my pg admin all currencies database tickers table and with values which are going to be assigned later so this one is generated these two values are read from the item and 
and the value now is simply just a date time now timestamp all right maybe you have noticed already one thing is missing and that's the user python spy so i'm going to create this user now because uh, i actually didn't create one yet while i specified one already now the easiest way how to create a user is by going into this query tool here and writing a simple statement create user py with encrypted password and in this apostrophe the password three times the one very simple just for an example please never use this password in real world world applications this is just for maximum simplicity here let's create this user by simply just selecting it and hitting f5 f5 is the same like pressing this button here i will press f5 now and yeah i have a new user and i should be able to find this user here when i will click at login group roles and i will press f5 so i did it now and the pi user is here but the pi user doesn't have any privileges yet and he will not be able to log into our database so what i'm going to do as the next step is grant all privileges on database you don't need to have the big letters here and i will drag the database name to py which is my user now i'll select the whole line and hit f5 and the query returns successfully in 27 milliseconds this means that all privileges on database all currencies are granted but i think that it's still not going to work because i'm not going to be able to access the table tickers but let's try it out python cron python i think we will get an error now so first mistake that i made here it tells me function takes at most two arguments at uh, line 21 which is this one i didn't notice this before but here i'm missing a curly bracket because this part is one expression and this one is another then the entire instruction is closed by another curly bracket and that's how the cursor execute function works now i will save it i will start it again and i should get an error about the tables i guess yes permission denied for table tickers so let's return back to pg admin 4 and let's write one more thing now which is grant all privileges on table in this sentence we granted all privileges on the database and in the next sentence we are going to grant all privileges on table and the table is going to be called tickers and i will say to py user like this and now i'm going to select the entire line and i'm going to press f five and the query returns successfully in 29 milliseconds again i'm going to try out if this works now and i think it's going to work our table tickers if we have a look at it by selecting everything from these table tickers they should now return nothing so we simply just have a description of id symbol price date time the columns which are in the database but we don't have any data here so let's go have a look if the next step is going to bring some data and i hope it does so let's run it again python cron python and uh, let's stream the data from binance and yes we are streaming the data from binance the amount of currencies is 2123 not bad and all this is being saved real time in our postgresql database all right i will stop this now and let's go have a look into our pg admin one more time and i'm going to select this entire line now and press f5 and here is the data so this is how you can stream all currencies of binance into your postgresql database we can make also some more specific selects as we did also with the mssql database by specifying for example symbol selecting the entire line and f5 and here are all bitcoin usdts that we downloaded and this is how the price of bitcoin was moving while we were streaming the data so this is how you can stream all currencies of binance into your postgresql database 
I created Python Binance Stream or currencies into PostgreSQL project in my GitHub TechDivisions account. And here I'm going to upload the entire project now. Cron Python, DB Python, I've showed you already. And now read me. I sort of updated for all the things that you might need. I wrote the information about how you can create the user, how you can grant all privileges to a database and how you can grant all privileges to a table for that specific user, which is PY here in this case. Then how you can set select everything from a table, how you can delete all data in the table, tickers in this case, and here I have a typo, how you can order it by daytime and how you can order the data by daytime in a descending way. And uh, in the end, if you want to delete the user, then you simply first have to drop everything that the user owned and then drop the user. All right, that's it. So what I'm going to do is push it all here because it's all empty now. I'm going to call this one the first commit okay and here it is here in the cron python it's scheduled for every three seconds to do the job of retrieving the data from binance but uh, as i said before it's sort of unhealthy and you will probably get disconnected or some of the requests will not work out then you simply just need to make this number a little bit bigger like one minute or even longer to make sure that you will not get disconnected so many times so feel free to download this project and uh, feel free to experiment as much as you can because that's what this all is actually for that's all from me now please like comment and if this is the first time you are watching one of my videos don't forget to subscribe see you soon